I come to the floor today to talk about what my bipartisan health care bill with Chairman Alexander means for the people we are all here to serve, what it means for patients and families in my home state of Washington and across the country who are worried about being able to afford the health care they need, and what it means for states and communities and hospitals that are administering and providing care. You know, negotiations of this magnitude are always tough. There's some things you agree on. Sometimes there is common ground that emerges early. But there is no question you also find areas of strong disagreement. And so you have to work your way to each answer step by step. Now, one issue that Chairman Alexander and I agreed on from the very start of our negotiations, where we worked our hardest and what we had the most discussions on was the goal of putting patients and families first and that it would be families who would benefit as much as possible from our efforts to restore stability to our markets. That was the crux of our debate. It was our guiding star. And I'm very proud to say our bipartisan bill does just that. Because here's what's at stake, Mr. President. Here's what we know. Patients and families across the country are looking ahead to next year. They are rightly worried about their health care, premiums, benefits, coverage, and they are realizing they are about to pay the price for the uncertainty and partisanship we've seen on health care over the last nine months. Like all my colleagues, I have listened and I've talked with many of these families in my home state at hospitals and schools and roundtables, in meetings with patients and doctors and providers and veterans, and they've all made it very clear. Enough is enough with playing politics with people's health care. Now, Mr. President, here is how our bipartisan bill would protect those families and restore certainty to the markets. I won't go into all the details, of course, but I do want to focus on some really important points. First of all, this bill would restore the out-of-pocket cost reduction payments that President Trump has announced he's going to be ending for this year as well as 2018 um, and 19. That means that some serious sabotage, something experts say would pre uh, raise premiums by double digit, digits for millions of families, would be off the table. Secondly, this bill will make significant investments when it comes to health care outreach and enrollment to make sure that families know about their insurance options. And third, this bill makes some changes to give our states more flexibility when it comes to developing plans and offering options while maintaining essential health benefits like maternity care or people with pre-existing conditions or the elderly. And all this by making sure that costs go down for families and preventing insurers from double dipping and padding their profits with both cost reduction payments and higher premiums. So put simply, this bill is an important step in the right direction to prevent premium increases, to stabilize health care, and push back against President Trump's recent actions. This bill reflects the input of patients, governors, state commissioners, experts, and advocates, and it has a strong support from a majority here in the Senate. So far, 20 senators, 12 Democrats, 12 Republicans have co-sponsored this bill. And I know there are a lot of others who agree we need to act and that we must do so working together under regular order, like our bill, rather than doubling down on partisanship and dysfunction. So, Mr. President, I am focused on moving our bill forward as quickly as possible. And I certainly hope the majority uh, leader will listen to the members on both sides of this aisle who also want this bill to be brought up for a vote without delay. Now, let me be clear. As this bill moves forward, I'm certainly open to changes that expand access to quality care, that put families ahead of insurers, and maintain those core patient protections that I've been clear all along have to be protected. I'm certainly not interested in changing our bipartisan agreement to move health care in the wrong direction. Chairman Alexander and I have a record of seeing tough legislation through to the end, whether it was K-12 education or FDA user fees or mental health reform or opioid use disorders, which is why I am confident we can do the same with the stabilization bill. We have negotiated a strong agreement 
that has the support of 60 senators and growing. The President has expressed his support for our effort, and so I see no reason why we should not move this bill through the Senate, get it signed into law, and then continue the bipartisan discussion on health care in the country. Now, Mr. President, I also want to take some time today to talk about another pressing health care challenge, and that is the immediate need to extend federal funding for the historically bipartisan expired primary cliff programs like Community Health Center Fund, National Health Service Corps, and of course, Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP. It's now been almost 25 days since federal funding of these primary care cliff programs and CHIP were allowed to expire by the Republican majority. And in that time, I have heard from thousands of people in my state and nationwide urging Congress to act. And each day that passes is a day we are failing to meet our commitment to these families and putting the health and well-being of nearly 9 million children, including more than 60,000 in my home state of Washington and the 25 million patients who get care from the community health centers at great harm and great risk. Mr. President, in Washington state, like so many other states, notices to families about gaps in their children's health care are about to go out as soon as December 1st. And in my state, we will run out of federal funds for CHIP in November. So let me be clear, parents in my home state and across the country should not be up at nine worrying about their child's health care because Congress can't get the job done. That is so unacceptable. So, Mr. President, there is a bipartisan deal in the Senate right now negotiated between the chairman and ranking member of the Finance Committee that would provide certainty for this vital program. I understand that extreme House Republicans have chosen instead to run an irresponsible path and trying to ram through a partisan bill that will jeopardize the efforts in the Senate and in the House to come to an agreement as soon as possible. So, Mr. President, to be de clear, this delay has not been without serious consequences, but we can still act. It's up to Republican leaders now to reverse course, come to the table, join with Democrats to get this done. It shouldn't have to be said, but there should not be any place for partisanship or politics when it comes to protecting the children and families we represent. So I hope we get this done and get it done quickly and hope all of our members will uh, move forward on this. Thank you, Mr. President. You have the floor.